Hello and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Steven and today is Tuesday, April 2nd. Tesla has released its Q1 delivery and production numbers, confirming the suspicion that it's not growing anymore and the results have been even worse than expected. People have kept lowering their expectations until reaching a consensus of 431,000 deliveries. For comparison, Tesla had record deliveries of around 484,000 vehicles last quarter for a 20% year-over-year growth rate and it delivered around 422,000 at the same time last year. Today, Tesla confirmed 386,810 deliveries for the first quarter of the year. In response, Tesla said that this was partially due to the Model 3 being in early production and several factory shutdowns due to external factors. However, this doesn't explain the discrepancy between production and deliveries which reveals there was a demand problem here. Tesla stock dropped by much as 7% in pre-market trading following the release. This is not a good position for Tesla, as it is far below even the most pessimistic predictions for deliveries and should serve as a wake-up call for the automaker. Despite lower than expected deliveries in the first quarter, Tesla has officially regained the title as EV global volume leader from BYD. This could be pointing to issues in the Chinese EV market. Tesla has always been a pure electric vehicle manufacturer, while most of the other automakers, including BYD, have dabbled with hybrids. In Q4 of 2023, BYD's EV volume surpassed Tesla's for the first time despite the latter having a record quarter. Today, Tesla released its Q1 delivery and production numbers, and despite the worst results it had in years, it was enough to still beat BYD by a wide margin. Tesla delivered just over 380 86,000 EVs, while BYD sold just over 300,000 units. However, when you add hybrids to BYD's number, its total number balloons up to 626,000 263 vehicles. Also, BYD sales are up 13% year over year, unlike Tesla's, which are down 8%. The performance of both Tesla and BYD are highly dependent on the Chinese EV market and even more so for BYD, which have been affected by changing incentives and even more competition. Seemingly, to counter disastrous Q1 EV delivery results, Tesla decided to release energy storage deployment early, and its energy storage business is still surging. Tesla deployed 4,053 megawatt hours of energy storage products in Q1, the highest quarterly deployment yet, and it could continue to grow. Earlier this year, over 440 mega packs were spotted in Tesla's mega factory shipping yard. That alone is over 1,700 megawatt hours of energy storage ready to ship out. Tesla is currently also building a second mega factory in Shanghai to produce the mega pack out of China. If the company can bring the factory to production this year, it could start contributing to its energy storage growth. There's nothing new about major automakers and motorcycle companies trying to build and sell e-bikes. Despite the millions of e-bikes being produced each year by bicycle companies, automotive companies have spent decades failing to convert their design and manufacturing experience into e-bike success. It seems e-bikes just didn't translate into sales at car dealerships. The $1,000 price meant that car salesmen working on commission couldn't really be bothered to sell them and certainly not when they stood to make a lot more money pushing someone into a car or pickup truck. Dealerships also quickly learned that there wasn't enough money to be made in servicing e-bikes when the same car bay could turn over significantly more cash. Yamaha is one of the few success stories to date still producing impressive e-bikes, though the company famously spins its non-auto products often to their own companies. Harley-Davidson shocked the industry back in 2018 with its beautiful electric bike designs. Still, it ultimately spun the project out as an independent company, Serial One, that failed to achieve strong sales. In many cases, the actual product was quite impressive. Harley's Serial One e-bikes often scored great reviews despite the low sales. It's a tough cycle that has continued to repeat itself. The failure has usually been when an engineering culture, proud of their creation, has turned the bikes over to a sales culture that doesn't understand or believe in the product. However, several major companies are still trying to develop their own models. Porsche, for example, has recently bought entire e-bike companies in an attempt to bring in more e-bike expertise. Rivian, the US-based electric truck maker, has also significantly expanded its e-bike development team. 
Hyundai's Ioniq 5 just set a new sales record as EV sales climbed 100% last month. Despite rising competition and interest rates, demand for its EVs still remain high. After climbing to become the sixth best-selling EV in the US last year, Hyundai's Ioniq 5 is not slowing down after selling 3,361 models in March. Hyundai's other dedicated EV, the Ioniq 6, also saw higher demand as sales reached 1,984 in March. Hyundai's new sales records come after slashing EV prices and offering significant incentives. The Ioniq 6 is one of the cheapest vehicles to lease, starting at just $169 per month. In today's community comment found on YouTube, somebody mentioned that Tesla doesn't plan on tying its revenue to car sales, but to FSD licensing. While this does seem like a more scalable business, it will be interesting to see how a widely available FSD changes transportation infrastructure. Thank you for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Steven and have a great day.